Welcome gamers, weebs, and nerds alike. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Game of the Year and ranking them on which ones were actually phenomenal games and which ones were kind of poopy dookie. I'm Zach. I'm Barbecue Bacon Burger. <laughs> and I guess without further ado, uh, we'll just get right into it, starting with Madden 04, which honestly, I think it's one of the better Maddens. I had a yeah. lot of fun playing it as a kid. Um, there's not really much more to say about it. It's just, it's a good Madden. It was fun times back when Madden was actually a good game. Um, is it a phenomenal game? No, but I personally think it should be around B tier. I don't know what you think. So my personal, since we're, apparently we're not putting Poopoo Dookie, we're leaving it as never played. It would go into never played because I played it later in life, but I mean, by that point, Madden had kind of stagnated in my mind. So, I mean, it's it's a good Madden, fundamentally, like you said. So, I'd say B or C. I'm fine with either. We can put it C tier. Next, we got GTA San Andreas. And you can click right in the top right corner to see our, our thoughts on these in our last video. But GTA never should have won a game of the year ever. Um, so, the fact that there's two of them here. There's three. There's three of them here. Just boggles <laughs> my mind. I, I'll be honest. Out of the three, at least, I, I will give San Andreas this. It is the better GTA experience, I think, out of the three. I mean, when you take GTA 5 online out, GTA 5 is shit. <laughs> there, I said it. Um, apologies to the youngins' ears for that. But I think GTA San Andreas is at least a B tier. It's a good game. I mean, think about how quotable it is and how much it pops up in like meme culture. I think it is a great game, but I still don't. Yeah, I don't know. Give me a but that's not a here nor there. We talked about that enough in our other the top right, 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 right. stuff. We got Resident Evil 4. OK, let me let me give a quick ticket to talk about this, because I know I'm the one that really has played this <laughs> in its original form. I think Resident Evil 4 was a turning point for the Resident Evil series. I mean, it was already very popular. But I mean, this is the one everyone always goes back to. I think there's a few glaring negatives in like how the game controls or obviously how it looks if you try to play it modernly. But aside from all the jankiness of it, it is one of the best Resident Evil experiences, and especially with the remaster, remake, whatever, whatever oops, remake, excuse me. Amazing game. Play the remake if you haven't played the original. And if once you play the remake, play the original <laughs> and see how different it is. I think it's, uh, uh I think it's, hmm. See, I don't, I, I hesitate to say S tier because I know a lot later games on this list I'm gonna want to go into S tier personally. Yeah, we gotta be, we gotta be, we gotta be tough oh, about this. It's cool. I would say A, because it set a lot of really good precipices for the series. Uh, or set a lot of good trajectories for the series. Next up, we got Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. I I, have, okay. I, I was going to say, do I need to talk again? <laughs> um, I don't, I've never played it a whole bunch. So honestly, my personal opinion, I put it like B or C. I know it has its fan base. Um, and I know some people think it's better than a game that will come down later, later down the road. But... For now, I'm not one of those people. I'd put it at high C. High C, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. High C it when is. When I say high C, I mean ahead of Madden. Well, all right. The order matters. <laughs> but it, it's well, a, I mean, it's yeah. It's a good game from what I've seen, and it it really started to push the open world genre a little bit, which just got yes. capitalized entirely on by Skyrim. But it does have its limitations. And the 37 re-releases of Skyrim. And its age shows. Next, we got what some people consider one of the greatest games of all time, especially story-wise. We got Bioshock, the first adventure into Rapture. I, Dope. from what I've played of it, I would put it. God, I, I thought you were leaving it on F. I was about to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just hovering F. I was I like, I've never finished you're it. Dead to me. it. It is a great game. Um, the story is really interesting. The gameplay is really fun. Um, the big daddies are terrifying. Yeah, they uh, are. and those doll girl things are also kind of creepy. Uh, the little sisters. Yeah, those. Uh, you better be a decent person and save them. 
You better not be that guy. You but, were that guy. No, I've been, I've been saving them. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you think? Do you S tier, A tier, F? I think I would like to request that. Uh, would you kindly put it in A? Above or below Font Resident Evil Four? Oh, that's hard. Below. Next. When I the Bioshock we... remake comes out, maybe it'll go above. <laughs> I think we all know where this is going. I don't Let's even see. want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't think we need to say much more. GTA is not a fantastic. Put it in poop. It has. Here, I'll, I'll actually I'll leave it in F. This and I'll make this poop. Poop tier. <laughs> poop dookie. Leave it in F. No, leave it in F. GTA Four had some really good stuff. Had a really good protagonist, I think. Yeah, and but I mean, yeah, it has a decent enough open world, and you can do a bunch of stuff in it. It's just, it's not our cup of tea, and mm -mm. it's just. Honestly, at this point, there's been so many games that have done kind of that, but better. But again, if you want to hear more about that, be sure to check out our ranking of our top 10 games that should have won Game of the Year. I got there. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got Uncharted 2. D. I think this is a solid B tier. It's arguably, outside of Uncharted 4, it is arguably one, it is arguably the best Uncharted game. Story-wise, it's really darn good. It does that kind of Tarantino thing where it starts you off oh. in the middle and then it oh. jumps you back. Is that the one with the train? You yes. start and you fall out the train? See, I've never really played this to completion, so I don't, I don't actually have an opinion that matters with this game, unfortunately. And Nathan Drake. I wasn't just... a PlayStation Andy till later. Yeah. I think this deserves at least a solid feature above San Andreas if the yeah. tier list were okay. I'd agree with that. Next we have Red Dead Redemption. Is this the first mm. S tier or is this going A? I so I'm gonna get some heat for this. <laughs> I think Red Dead is an amazing game. I do. But I think Red Dead 2 took everything Red Dead did and bumped it up to the nines. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like took it, took it in spades and just absolutely improved upon everything that it did great. I think the for the time, I think the DLC was really unique in that it was an entire like full fledged open world zombie story that we haven't. I mean, other than with something like Dead Rising, really, we haven't really seen something like that, especially not to the scale that it was. So that was pretty awesome. I I struggle because I think I think S would be well deserved with Red Dead because I mean you can probably count on one hand the amount of games in a Western setting that's done well and I think it would be bottom S top A no matter no matter what I don't know if we want to push it to S because I feel like in the coming years the S bar is about to get a little full. Next, we have the infamous Elder Scrolls V Skyrim on Twitch. Also known as Skyrim. Um, <laughs> I know Zach's feelings on this, <laughs> and yeah. it makes me sad. I just uh, this is this is the first game I really like sunk my life into. Oh crap, World of Warcraft. But Skyrim is the first truly like single player game I sunk my life into the second I got my hands on it. Amazing game with amazing Zach, don't even say anything. You're wrong. Jeremy Soul, love you. It's just an amazing Jeremy game. Soul did do a phenomenal job because he also did the soundtrack to one of my favorite games of all time in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, this, this one just didn't scratch your brain itch, and that's okay. Yeah, no, it, it was a good game. I will admit, and sometimes it's fun to go back and play, especially with like mods and stuff like that. It had a decent, I wouldn't say its main story was all that special or unique, um, yeah. but its world was really cool, it felt lived mm -hmm. in, um, and obviously, I mean, it was good enough to keep getting re-releases and re-releases and re-releases and re-releases. You can play it on your refrigerator. I mean, come on. So, I mean, I guess for that reason alone, we can put it S tier. Next, we have The Walking Dead Telltale. I didn't realize this won a game of the year, if I'm being honest. Neither did I. Uh, and honestly, I would put it here. I, I, or whoa, 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 whoa. 
chill, bro. Chill. Like, it was cool, but and like obviously everybody will remember the memes of Telltale, you know, and they'll, like Lee will remember that, Clementine will remember that. But I just I don't think it's overall as a game that much fun. So I think there's a lot of personal bias that's filling that thought with you because I I mean this is like the age-old argument with which we'll talk a little bit about it later with Baldur's Gate at the end there but you know a lot of people don't like turn-based and in the same way a lot of people don't like the Telltale games with you know the it's mostly a a point-and-click movie you're watching essentially well, I mean because like I enjoyed the Game of Thrones Telltale game maybe um, that's just source material appreciation more than this this is one of the first games that made me like almost cry with the ending of this this first rendition of it it's just it's amazing uh I, I i it's one of those games that i hated clementine i hated her she was so annoying and by the end i loved her character and i loved her growth throughout the other episodes i don't think it deserves d at all i, I would I'd be willing to bump it up to c i would settle with it being above madden next genre being the, telltale the last game of Oop. the Poop. TV awards poop. and SGTA 5. Poop. Poop. I mean, poop, this, poop, like, poop, the characters poop, poop. are cool. The world's cool, I guess. But Bro, name GTA one cool thing about any character other than Trevor. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of GTA Online, which is like the only thing that was really keeping that game kicking, it is just an okay game. And the fact that it came out in the same year as a bunch of other games like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. God. I just I I can't give it anything higher than poop. It's just not and here's a the thing, just so game. that we don't get crucified in the comments. I I will say if GTA Five and GTA Five Online were on here separately, online honestly I'd put it in S. I mean you got to look at it. It's still releasing fresh content fairly on a regular basis. Now I mean obviously it's not for us. Like I I don't like it. Personal preference, it's still poop. But I mean. Crap, look at the look at the RP meta. Even right now. Oh, yeah. It's insane. You have streamers like SFAN who are playing this game for 14 hours a day. Every freaking day. Next, we have the first game in the Game of the Year awards in Dragon Age Inquisition. I think story-wise, um, it's A tier. I liked the characters, um, the world was reasonably unique, uh, the powers were cool, it was the first time we could jump in a Dragon Age game, but every time I try and do a Dragon Age playthrough, I always stop like halfway through Inquisition because it uh -huh. has that issue where it's not that the worlds aren't lived in and don't have stuff to do, it's that there's too much stuff to do and some of them are just like pointless. It's too much pointless stuff to do. That just were you thrown in to just fill up the world uh -huh. and it just kind of detracts from it a little bit. I do really Extremely. enjoy the game and I think it's beautiful. It has a good soundtrack. The characters are all cool. But I think that aspect of it drags it down from possibly I, even being up here so I, I would probably put it either low a or high b tier and that's where we disagree because i would say honestly mid c to d i don't i don't i don't like it there's too much nothing to do I, i'd I top say, top top be it or mid be it i yeah I'll put, put it, it above san andreas yeah Next, I think, in my opinion, we have our next S tier. We got The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I know, I guess I'm apparently in the minority. I've beaten this game three times. And every time, I just have a blast playing it. The, you know, hunting monsters as Geralt. All the characters are written extremely, extremely well. Some of the best writing I think I've personally seen in gaming. Um, the music is really good. The world is huge and it feels lived in. Um, the combat I know is a lot, a lot of people don't extremely like. I think it's fine. Uh, the DLC is phenomenal. And I think all around, it is darn near one of the best RPGs I think that has ever come out. And Doug Cockrell 
does a phenomenal job as Geralt. I'm gonna say it. I like Witcher 2 better. See, it's okay to be wrong. No, I'm not. But I... For personal like preference. With Skyrim, it is me with The Witcher 3. Exactly. It, it, I, think it's, I think it's below Skyrim, but I think it is an S. Next, we got uh, yeah. Overwatch. <laughs> While I can respect what it was, and I can respect what it did, and if we're judging it solely based on the game itself and not on its sequels... Because it doesn't... Well, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> For one, it became the beast that it is now. So, yeah, Overwatch 2 is such a mess, especially with the new crosshair and um, hitboxes that are just god-awful atrocious. They lied to us about having a PvE story mode. They just scrapped... There's so many cool things they could have done, and they just didn't. And now it's 5v5, which is okay, but I kind of prefer no. 6v6. Yes. Um, and I can respect um, what it did for the esports genre. It was huge. Well, but before you say more about that, I think it also needs to be extremely critiqued with the esports genre. Because I think it did a lot of amazing things for it, yes. I spawned the Overwatch League, gave a lot of careers to a lot of people that maybe wouldn't have, you know, high-paying careers otherwise nerd nerdy gamers xqc but it also gave us xqc poop dear no uh <laughs> no but i think it also needs to be extremely critiqued on that same point because i think they did really bad control of the competitive aspects of the game uh, let us and know it just sucks <laughs> what the meta was because i can't remember right offhand but it was three tanks three healers three tanks three healers yeah i can't remember the exact name it for it but it was so boring to watch it was boring to watch and kind of boring to play if i'm being honest yeah because you knew you knew no matter what you're like okay hey, playing three tanks three healers that's what's gonna happen that's what we're gonna go against i think it does a lot of amazing stuff but i think the poor management of the game after release is a problem because yeah it spawned a lot of great things they shot themselves in the foot so later on this is our first d tier or is this good on the f for poop so i think d we can put it in d just to put something there it's just it's hard for me to say that but it's just hard it's just sad it's just such a poorly managed game yeah next we have Legend is Bow. the Breath of the Wild. I like this better than Tears of the Kingdom. I liked the abilities in Tears more, and I thought it was a lot more innovative, but mm -hmm. Breath did something that we hadn't seen before. It spawned that new stamina wheel. Yeah. Uh, being able to climb pretty much anything. Like, it was hugely innovative at the time, and it is a phenomenal game, especially when it runs on a toaster yeah i think i think the world is more full of things that matter to do i think breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom both struck struggle struggle from the same problem kind of that we talked about with dragon age where there's too much like go pick up 17 berries you know like kind of yeah, or like the shrines there's a crap ton of shrines yeah. and i think the some of the hero abilities were a little bit better in breath of the wild i think bare minimum this deserves a tier I think it goes above Bioshock, honestly, even above Resident Evil, because it, it's it's an amazing, beautiful game that I still play, now, and it, yeah, did a lot of stuff. Now, this is one that I know you take issue with, because it did come out the same year as Red Dead Redemption 2. Absolutely robbed, bro. And that is Absolutely God robbed. of War. Now, I don't know, no. have, have you played this game? I have now. It, I really enjoyed I liked I did like Ragnarok a little bit more uh -huh. but this was a huge deviation from the franchise because it used to be yeah. hack and slash they yeah. tried something new and they knocked it out of the park and it worked they did amazing yeah the story credit, credit is good too. The, the combat is fun um the characters are all reasonably likable I'm not I wasn't a huge fan of Atreus in the first game but well a bit in the second game exactly gotta love the two dwarf brothers rip brock and sindri um mmir on your hip you know giving you your wise words overall i think it's a great game was it better than red dead 2 debatable it, i think yeah. bare no. minimum <laughs> it it's a tier. yep yep 
I would even put it above. I'll, I'll put it below Resident Evil 4. I'll, I'll show Resident Evil 4 what Resident Evil 4 did. But All right, no, good. Overall, it was a phenomenal game, and if you haven't played it, I definitely recommend playing it. It it's good. It's a solid like 30, 40 hours, and mm-hmm. I think it's highly worth it. Now we have the first time from Soft won a game of the year in Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. I know Oop, this Dark Souls Three wasn't, better. Wasn't your cup of tea, especially? Oop, Dark Souls Three better. Oop, Dark Souls Three better. I thought it was fun. I thought the combat was cool. Um, the bosses were interesting, kinda. Mm-hmm. Um, it it was a huge deviation from Dark Souls in terms of instead of like parrying or dodging, it was like you are you are blocking and parrying this stuff. You you're not dodging because if you don't parry or block, you're basically dead. So you had to completely switch up your mentality. I hate it. Um, the prosthetics were kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I never finished cool. it. But some of the boss fights... Crap. Trash have, gamer. Yeah, I know. Some Can't of the boss fights have some really... Cool, like, just the rule of cool. Uh, Cut off the monkey head, the monkey get up. So I... I okay. I would at least see it here. I think it did I a think lot of one, things. And it helped build what... I think it's going to be one of our other S tiers. I think, to be honest, it's, it's a darn near perfect game. All things considered um personal bias aside i have to be fair um i think like you said it was a pretty big deviation because i mean bloodborne already existed at this point so like they had already kind of deviated but that was still kind of a grimdark setting even though it was london essentially instead of um medieval low a i don't want to get flamed too hard i think low a or top b it's it's a great game i just it's not my my Hashtag not my game of the year. Next, we have probably one of the most controversial games that have come out in recent years, and The Last of Us Part Two. I can't really say much on it. I never played it. I just heard a lot of controversy about it, and it just kind of drove me away from playing the game. So, I'm going to be real honest. I think it's just as good, if not better, than The Last of Us. But the thing that people hate is the story and they get hung up on that one fact in the first act of the game. Um, And then they write off the rest of the game. And I don't think that's fair to the game as a whole. Um, I think the story is way more frustrating as far as as overall. Like if you were a fan of the first game and then you go into the second one knowing nothing, you're going to hate the game (laughs) after the first act. You're going to hate it. But if you finish it through to the end, it's it's still an amazing experience. Amazing voice acting, beautiful setting, good mechanics, crappy antagonist slash protagonist because you play as her a little bit. I kind of hate it. I I really hated that character. I can't even remember her name right now. Uh, I'd say low C. I didn't didn't like it. Put it below Madden. (laughs) Yep, Madden better. All right, it takes two. We tried this Boop. game. Boop. Boop. Yeah, that, I think that it just kind of showed that it was that year was not a great year, 2020. No, it wasn't. I was looking up games that came out that year, and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. Just not much came. I mean, it was COVID, so I mean, you can't really blame the gaming company, gaming industry. There's just not a lot came out, and that just kind of was just the culmination of that. I think. Uh, you know, again, I've said this phrase like 700 times, credit where credit's due, but I, I have to be fair in the sense that it is a great game. And again, I'd like to emphasize this is personal preference off of this tier list. We're not trying to be actual and like really dissect this at a core and be like, well, since we no, put Oblivion in C. Like, oh, OK. Everybody My, else bad. Is My bad. I think this is a game that really brought a lot of people into gaming. I think that's really cool, and it's, it's, um, it's, but it's just it's not for us. Here. No, dude. Marriages were ended over this, which is ironic. <laughs> All right. Next, we have the final two. We both know where both of these are going. Yeah. Well, well I think I think we all know. <laughs> I'll put them there after we explain. But yep. first, we got Elden Ring. This mm-hmm. was the first game in a long time, and especially while we were in college, that I just, every day after class, I would just go and play Elden Ring. And Dude, it sucked because I would have rehearsal some days and you'd be like, I just beat this boss. And I'm like, you bitch, I was in rehearsal for four hours. It's just such a good game. And oh, I yeah. love how Miyazaki, replay it. Um undersold. Like the game was undersold. 
not like it didn't sell many games. Like, they just were like, yeah, here's here's our next game. And here's yeah. the trailer. And then you play it, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm in Limgrave. Okay, Kaelid. Okay, but then you keep exploring, and there's dungeons all everywhere where I'll, where you least expect them. And then Friggin you get Maelstrom. Le Lernia of the Lakes, and then there's even places past that, and there's just so many. The game is so big. There's a whole map above, a whole map below. Like, it's just, you can't, every time you think you're done exploring and you found everything there is to find, you here's find another corner. New. Which is mm -hmm. what makes me so excited for the new DLC coming out this year. Yeah, why was the DLC more hyped than <laughs> the actual game release? And I think that's just a testament to From Software and the respect that they have garnered and earned over the years by putting out phenomenal game after Rightfully phenomenal so. game after phenomenal mm -hmm. game with amazing DLCs to boot. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they've had a few misses here and there. It's just overall the game is so much fun you can play how you want to play there's so many ways to defeat bosses and i think it's it was just one of the best experiences i've had in gaming in a very mm -hmm. long time very fair so obviously that i think is going on top of it top S. then yep. we got <clears throat> the most recent game of the year in Baldur's Gate 3. I'll, I'll, I don't I, I don't know how anyone got mad at this one. I'm sorry, but if you're a... Mm, <laughs> if you're a Spider-Man 2 fanboy that thinks that should have... Actually an idiot. You're actually stupid. Yeah, like, I played Spider-Man 2. I haven't finished it yet, but it, it is a, it's a decent game. It's fun. The gameplay is exciting. You know, but so Baldur's Gate 3 exists. And... I don't think anybody like I wasn't even expecting to buy this game back in August. I was like, oh, you know, this game came out. I mean, it looks kind of fun, I guess. I mean, I liked um, Larian's other games, uh, the Divinity franchise. And I knew nothing going into this. I, I had like, just watched him play Divinity and I was like, eh, I don't I like, whatever, I'll buy it. I was like, OK, this this is fun that I get into the character creator and I'm telling Brendan about it. And he's like, all right, fine, I'll buy it. And then we yep. played it. And for me, Two hundred and like thirty-five hours later, <laughs> yep. I've beaten the game once. I have a bunch of other playthroughs going. You have a so, million characters, man. <laughs> it's so good, and the right. I think, while I've said this before, this is some amazing writing, and I think the one thing that sets it above Divinity is every single character and cutscene is voice acted. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. There's so many lines to record. So I would just like to point this out, you guys, just so that you know, Zach is extremely biased. I am saying everything I'm going to say about this game, and I only have 105 hours in it. He has 245.9 hours in this game. <laughs> Currently, I mean, he hasn't played it in weeks, which is crazy. It's God, it's amazing. The story's amazing. Um, the characters are so insanely well developed. I dude, I I need to do a playthrough of focusing Lazelle's story because I've seen bits and pieces of it when she starts to actually develop as a character, and it's it's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. There's no other way to put it. It's so so well done. Oh yeah, every character, even Will to an extent, has like a decent. I don't give a shit story. about Will. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be real honest. The music. Oh, so well uh, choreographed. Uh, Bobby, Bob, Bob. did an amazing job. I said choreographed. So well written. Um, I was going to attack you. I'm glad you fixed that yourself. And this also got people, just like Elden Ring, got people that weren't into the Soulsborne franchise into Soulsborne. Got people into turn base. This got people into turn base and CRPGs. Myself included. And it's just because there's so many different ways you can go about combat. Mm -hmm. And you can also just make the character you want. There's 12 different classes. You can multi-class. There's subclasses. There's 12 different races, different origins. I mean, it's just it's a D&D &D player's like wet dream. It's so good. Uh. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, our channel speaks for itself. We had our playthrough go and we posted a crap ton on TikTok about it. Obviously, yeah, I uh, the playthrough one. ending was kind of sad, but I I put it above S tier. I I'll put it above S tier, by the way, or like above, above Elden Ring in S tier, I should say. Uh, it goes up here, everybody. It's up here. <laughs> it goes in the tier maker tier. 
that's going to do it for us today here on the Variant Geek Crew. Be sure to let us know your thoughts on this list in the comments and be sure to check out our 10 list for games that should have won Game of the Year. Till next time, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next geeky video.